Hey guys, what's happening? So, got the Orca concept printer going here at uh, 24 volts. Um, yeah, I'm getting pretty good speed out right now. I'm mean, actually I really having an extra. I, I could go even higher than this. Running about 1.4 amp. Two was overloading the drivers. But, uh, so I got some new um, 5160s, the external pros from uh, Big Tree Tech here. Um, <coughs> So I thought I wanted to step up the voltage and the current um, because I actually have those LDO uh, Super Power HTs, uh, 2.8 8, 8 amp max. Plus I want to drive these at 48 volts. So these are the uh, Big Tree Techs. They're basically like the external um, 5160 driver. I'll go through that and I'll show you what's up. All right, so here is the driver, and uh, the unique thing about this driver is that it actually um, has these external MOSFETs here. So I'm guessing that these are four for each coil. I don't know for sure, but that's what I'm guessing. Um, then this is a 5160 high current driver. And it came with this heat sink here. But all the things I've seen has a heat sink on top of the MOSFETs. And that kind of makes sense because um, you know, you're no longer driving the, the primary current through the, the actual driver. You're actually driving it through the MOSFETs. So you're just using the driver to trigger the MOSFETs. So let's say here's a here's a 2209 driver. So the max the current is actually flowing through the driver. So I think these have like 1.5 amp, 1.2 amp. So you're actually throwing the current through the actual driver. And that's actually why they get super hot and they need their individual heat sinks. But if you're not sending the current through the actual driver and you're just controlling external MOSFETs, then uh, supposedly you don't need a heat sink, but I'm going to put a heat sink on there anyways. Um, they do actually sell a version with this with an aluminum machine heat sink, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's double the price. I got these for Christmas. Um, so yeah, it just connects to the board here. Here's a SKR 103 board. I'm going to use a test them. Um, older board. But. Um, yeah, so you just basically hook this little driver on there and there's a little external cable that runs to it. So the driver no longer sits on the board, it's an external supply. Um, so one of the nice things too is that the actual driver is no longer connecting, because you're running so much higher current and voltage, um, that you're no longer using one of these little weak JST connectors. Like these things just can't handle high current applications. So you're going to be actually, I'm going to be putting like some ferrules on the connectors, but look, look how much bigger those connectors are. <clears throat> so you can drive much bigger drivers too. So I'm going to be running NEMA 17s, probably max 2.2 amp, 48 volt. Um, but you could easily run like NEMA 23s in this thing, probably even NEMA 24s, as long as you're under 10 amp. So, I mean, you don't ever usually want to max out the amperage too. So I mean, you'd probably want to go about 75%, 80% of the max current. Um, all right, so I gotta get this installed. Uh, actually, I need to flash my uh, the clipper firmware on this one right here. And get this tested, get it going, get it configured. So I'm gonna hook up my 24 volt power supply here. And then I'm gonna hook up a, uh, uh, a new test Nina 17. And then I'm gonna use my Benz power supply here to feed the driver so I can see how much current it's actually pulling down. Um, do some test movements. And then I have my little Raspberry Pi 1 as my little test uh, clipper environment. Yeah, I'm obviously I'm not going to use Raspberry Pi 1 in a production environment where I'm actually printing, but for testing it's fine. That, that way I can just do some motor tests and stuff. Um, Alright, so i got to flash this board and hook up the wires. Oh, I forgot to say, it did actually come with like the, what's it called like this Easy, Easy, uh, Big Tree Check, their Easy uh, little connector here. Um, also I noticed that there's, there's some diag pins soldered, so if you want to do sensorless homing, that's what those extra two pins are for. Um, let's watch one this X. All right, I'm guessing this is X. So put that right there. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the capacitors. So one of the nice things about these Pro uh, drivers is they have these external capacitors. Actually, pretty big cap capacitors, too. Um, and that's actually what these are on the board here, the smaller ones. So under, like, hard accelerations and moves, uh, it's going to want to dip the voltage down. So this will keep it as, like, a energy source that will draw from these caps versus drawing from the actual power supply. So, yeah, these are definitely, uh, you want these for like really fast moves. You know, I really haven't looked at the schematic of this thing yet, but there actually is a uh, fan right here. 
and I do actually see like a 24 volt input, or like a light on there. So I'm guessing that is, or assuming this is what you're supplying the board with. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, now there's some kind of internal voltage regulator here that keeps this at 24 volts. So I guess I could try that too. See what, you know, ch try the uh, change in the inputs and see if the fan output changes the voltage. Because not everybody's gonna have a 24 volt uh, uh, power supply. So that's what I'm assuming. I'm, are they assuming you're gonna have 24 volt or is there an onboard voltage regulator for the fan? Um, yeah, and that's the high voltage input right there. So, right, so I got a 24 volt power supply connected. Plug that in. All right, now I got a copy uh, compiled firmware.bin file to the SD card slot here. And yeah, so it is supplying power. Like I don't have any power connected to this device yet. Um, so power is being supplied. Um, so what I can do is probably can get my multimeter and test it here. Um, all right, so it is actually being supplied 24 volt here. Now, it would be nice to be able to turn these fans off if it's not being driven. You know, if there was like, you know, like if, I, if this was connected directly to the board, I could control that fan input, you know? I guess I could control it from the, I don't need to actually use these, I can control it from the main board. Um, so instead of actually running the fans on this thing that are always on, you know, when I do a basically an XY move, these are, these are gonna be on the XY, uh, axis that the fan will only turn on when I start actually activating the drivers um, but we'll see actually like I said maybe even like in the well I guess we'll see how, how much these MOSFETs heat up um, you know <clears throat> when it's just basically an idle current you know all right there we go got the heat thing on so I decided to cover what's weird is the <clears throat> the one with the billet cover the heat thing's going this way but I would I'd rather <clears throat> cover all eight MOSFETs and then I just had an extra heat sink on the uh, 5160 driver. But there is actually a pretty big distrib distribution, I don't know, like a dissipation thing right there. So, um, <clears throat> one that sucks is I don't think these 51, these 5160s don't have an internal thermistor, so you don't know what temperature they're running at. Like the newer Trinamic drivers, what are they called, 5140s? Or, no, I can't remember what they're called. Um, I made a video video about them. I'm actually running them in the Oracle right now. But, all right. Positive negative, got my motor, my original <coughs> printer bot motor. You know, uh, this this is actually the original Z motor. <laughs> Look how big that is. I mean, that, that was on the Z axis right there. Um, crazy heavy. Um, which I still use this printer on a daily basis. So, it actually does, it actually printed out the Orca. So, all right, so let me fire this up. Back, fire that back up. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna go back, log into Clipper and see if I can move these things. I'm not gonna do like obviously I'm not gonna do any speed tests because I I still need to order a 48 volt power supply. And um, um turn this up to like 36, whatever whatever the max is. That's like 30, 32. Um and I'll see if this thing gets hot or not and how hot the MOSFETs get. Like I said, I mean, just the way it looked, even though I, I looked at the schematics, the manual's kind of horrible. Um, so you can actually do UART mode. I'm thinking like, I mean, the 5160 doesn't support UART. So now I'll say originally had, you were gonna put a different driver in here, a UART based driver. So the options here were, you know, SPI, no jumpers, um, bolt jumpers capped for uh, UART mode and then uh, a single jumper capped for like a standalone. But if you do the standalone mode, then you have to manually set the actual steppers, like 16 microsefts. But since I'm doing this in SPI mode, I can do everything in software and Clipper. You know, sometimes I uh, forget that a lot of people that watch these videos aren't familiar with electronics. So if you're not familiar with the term MOSFET, I made a video about it. But a MOSFET is just a, a switch, an electrically controlled switch. So I'm basically using a smaller switch to control a bigger switch. And that bigger switch can handle more current. It's the same concept that if you've ever seen a 3D printer with a heated bed. You're basically using a smaller MOSFET. So when the bed becomes too big, right, it's drawing too much power and it can't draw the power out of power through this tiny little switch here, this little MOSFET transistor, right? So you're using this small switch to control a much larger switch. So it's the same concept as this. All right, so my first attempt to move this thing, I got uh, 
SPI uh, register global scalar. So I got to check my pin out. Um, let's see if they're correct. Like I said, the original configuration, I, I copied this SK103 off the, the Clipper uh, GitHub. I mean, things are, I'm sure have changed, so I have to look at the uh, pinouts for the SPI. All right, so I forgot the yeah. uh, last drivers I had in here are 2209s, or maybe 2208s. Um, I actually had this board for like four or five years. Um, I forgot to put it in SPI mode, the jumpers. All right, let's give that another shot. Okay, turn the power supply on. All right, plug that in. Alright, let's run this thing. So I have an end stop connected to it. <coughs> Do a, uh, I'm going to just home X here. And, uh, that's six, 16, uh, micro stepping. So, obviously, it's going to be pretty noisy. Alright, I'm going to turn on interpolation. That should actually bring it to, you know, higher, higher micro-stepping. Then we should make it quieter. But, uh, actually, I'm not going to be running interpolation anyways. You know, interpolation, it makes the, when you're going fast with Quirks Wise, the interpolation can make more noise. So, like right now, I'm actually running this in 16 uh, micro right now. So, um, yeah, it's noisier, but, like, it's, it doesn't create a bunch of vibrations. And actually, it's more accurate too. At least I'm the way I find the quality of the prints are better. All right, so for some of these, I'll turn on interpolation. Interpolation, true. It's an enabled stealth chop. Let's try that again. Sounds smoother. Feels smoother. All right, they work. All right, so I've been playing these for about a half an hour. Different current settings. Actually, I'm not even at 48 volts. I'm at 32 volts. And this thing already just the, the Harley. I'm barely moving it, and this thing's starting to get super warm. This this motor. So um, I knew this would actually happen um, when you start increasing the voltage and, and the uh, the current. So. Uh, when I designed these uh, heat sinks, I think I made a video about this. Yeah, I did. I uh, uploaded already. The whole point of these massive heat sinks in the back were to absorb the heat. Um, because I know the higher voltage and higher current will generate some serious heat. Alright, so upcoming videos. I have to install these in the Orca printer. And that's actually one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm designing the legs to create an undermount box, a bigger undermount box, so I can actually put the two power supplies, 48 volt power supply and the 24 volt power supply. Um, so yeah, I gotta do the legs, I'm gonna do the under skirt care, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, this thing's getting warm. Well, it's getting so warm, it's like I have oil on my on my, uh, my workbench, and see that right there is like leaving, like it's, it's drawing the oil up. So as the heat, ex the wood expands and cr contracts, it wants to draw the oil out. Go back and run it again. Wow, those other ones are going to get super hot. I might be at 48 volts, so. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I built those big heat sinks. Alright, guys, having fun. Cool.